This is Twit. This episode of Tech Break brought to you by ACI Learning. 87% of companies have skill gaps. Secure your business with ACI Learning's Insights, the new skills gap analysis tool that revolutionizes how businesses train and engage employees. Try it for yourself, then bring your team along. Fill out the form at go.acilearning.com slash twit for a free two-week trial. So you went to the Valid presentation, Eon, uh, Ian. It is from the, I didn't even know the Cult of the Dead Cow was still around. These guys are legends in the hacker community. Um, yes, probably one of the first superstar hacking groups. Yeah. Um, it certainly attended con congressional hearings long before it was fashionable. Uh, it, it, it's kind of, I mean, they're not, they don't have meetings, right? <laughs> they, don't, they, don't, <laughs> they don't have special I think a loose collective. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. Another journalist who was there described uh, one of the participants as the leader of the cult of the dead cow, and she just tweeted out a picture of herself going, yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's not really that kind of an organization. No, nobody gets the special horned hat or anything like that. But, no, but no. I think that it's interesting, this presentation from uh, Dildog and Medus 4 uh, was interesting because I think in the back of their minds, at least, they're thinking, here comes the Snoopers Charter. We need yes. a better way of communicating that is impervious to this kind of government intervention. And you, you can see it coming because Apple and Google have ultimately have to give in, right? It's either give in or move out. And we saw Google did leave China, Apple did not. Right. Uh, yep. Seems highly unlikely Google or Apple will leave the UK. Microsoft didn't, even if they could... They didn't approve right. the Activision yeah, Blizzard. Sig Signal said they will leave the UK, and I think Signal? WhatsApp made I the same will. threat. Like, we're, yeah. we're not taking they have to, anti -any Facebook encryption out of Meta her. It's yeah. too big. They yeah. cannot, they're not, I'm sure Facebook, even if they're not going to put news in Canada or WhatsApp in the UK, they're not going to leave the country. So uh, we need mm -hmm. something that is not attached to a giant tech entity or a for-profit entity of any kind to provide us with this kind of encryption. That's what I always thought would happen, which was essentially it would be a grassroots people's tool. Is Valid that? Yeah. It is. Uh, it is and it isn't, put it that way. It's um, primarily the, you know, one of the points they were making was government, yes, certainly is a massive issue. Um, what also inspired this up to a point was basically surveillance capitalism. And people are making they they said they've made the point that you know we've gone from this open internet to everything you do being up for sale, and some people have become billionaires as a result, but at the cost of everyone else's privacy. Uh, and ultimately, this is something the government can latch onto as well. So what they wanted to do was build a decentralized network. Uh, the lovely phrase they had was, um, "It's like Tor and IPFS had sex, and this is the outcome." You know. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's, no, so Tor it's has we know, its, its own it problems. Here. The NSA owns about a hundred exit mm -hmm. nodes on Tor, so nothing's private on Tor, even though it tries to be, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then IPFS, which is what the interplanetary file interplanetary system. Interplanetary file system. Yeah. Is a uh, um, encrypted file system that actually Brave supports. I think some browsers support. Yeah. Yeah. Some, some do. Yeah, that yeah. allows you to kind of have a decentralized server technology. Um, yeah, so I mean here, with when you develop in, in Valid, then all your application, all the applications that are developed become nodes, but in, crucially, no one node is more equal than others. So it's a so mesh. It's, it's, it's a mesh, basically. So to come back to what you were saying about the NSA monitoring tool, you couldn't do this with this, with, with, with uh, this framework, unless you actually owned every single node or almost every single node and as this thing scales up it's going to be pretty much you know as secure as it is possible to be and they've made it clear that they're going to support this and improve things like encryption authentication the rest of it as new technology becomes available they did a server but they also have a, an app although yep, chat app yeah i think the premise is much like um with Signal, uh, Moxie created a library that others use. WhatsApp uses it, in yep. fact. Uh, mm -hmm. So is that the plan, too, is that Valid is going to say, here's a library, you can incorporate this into your... Yeah, I mean, basically, it's it's written in Rust with bits of Dart and Python, um, and there are crossover points between those. 
but it's very easy to they designed it deliberately to be very easy to uh, develop for but also very easy to use this was a point they made the user interface has to be good enough and they kind of issued a challenge at the end to the effect that look if you can get your parents on facebook safely you can get people using you know this platform safely as well um is so it, uh, it i guess the real test would be used this in hong kong right yes Yes, yep. and also, I mean, at, th at this moment, for it to be the the bigger it gets, the more secure it is. So, when oh, you've got interesting. In terms small, of the number well, of nodes on there, because, because it is a mesh. Of, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, the more nodes you've got, the more secure it is. So, at the moment, yeah, it's probably easy to. I mean, there's only maybe a couple of hundred or maybe a thousand people using it at the moment. But if you got it onto the scale of something like WhatsApp, it would be pretty much uncrackable. How does this compare to the Signal protocol? I mean, don't do we, don't we already yeah. have something like this? Uh, we have Signal, um, but again, and Signal is, to my mind, it, it, it's the messaging app of choice because it does this sort of thing so so uh, centrally. But you know, Signal is limited um, to really limited to sort of a very small number of use cases. The idea is that you could build an app for pretty much anything using the app using using the platform development program. And, you know, it would be a way of taking all that data. There's no central server. There's, you know, it's designed for mobile so that, you know, there's multiple redundancies built in. Uh, the number of steps in a communication makes it very, very difficult to, to trace. So, yeah, I mean, in terms of safeguarding information, it looks good, but it, it, has, to, it has to be at scale. And I think that's going to be the real make or break for this sort of thing. If enough people adopt it, it could be really useful, but it's, it's a question of driving that initial interest and getting people on the platform. Yeah. You know, given that uh, the UK Electoral Commission was hacked. Oh, yeah, okay. That was a wee bit embarrassing. <laughs> Come on, you had OPM. You know, when you're giving up... Oh, no, the I'm not casting stones. Stuff, we live in a glass house. Absolutely. But... There are a couple of things, points to be made here. One is That's such that, a British headline, by the way. Apologizes. You know. uh, so I'm so sorry. sorry. I'm definitely <laughs> sorry. 40 million register voter records accessible. Yeah. And they've known about it for months and didn't tell anybody. Yeah. No, no. I mean, this. Is, but you see, this is standard government policy. We've had a similar thing with the recent post office scandal where the government mandated that Fujitsu provide a billing system for the postal service the software screwed up and they blamed the postal people using it. And in some cases, they went to jail or committed suicide. So, I mean, obfusc obfuscation and denial is very much government policy in the UK and also in the US. Here's the, here's the timeline, which is kind of telling. They've now admitted that the Electoral Commission basically made the names and addresses of all voters registered between 2014 and 2022 available to hostile actors as of August 2021... They learned about it October 2022 and reported it eh, a couple of days ago. That makes Equifax look good. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Big burn. Excellent. Oh, my <laughs> God. Uh, they don't. The Electoral Commission said it's not able to know conclusively what information has been accessed. You would think that this would then, the, 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 the House of Commons would then say, gee, maybe encryption is kind of a good thing maybe maybe we should maybe we should not uh, put this stuff out in public i mean i think you're isn't asking there a politicians lesson? to change their mind on something oh, there is absolutely <laughs> but you're asking politicians to change their mind on something in a very public way and well, i think we all know that no politician is keen to do that yeah <laughs> they think russia might have done it at least that's what uh, david omond the former ghc gchq director said oh it's oh, would make sense yeah yeah, yeah, it's easy to blame uh, nation state hackers. It's also better because then, well, it's probably not going to end up on the dark web. They're just going to use it against us. <laughs> and kind of in a national. Everything's fine. <laughs> so it's all fine. Uh, the house isn't on fire, just the country, just the world.